In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at logarithmic properties. So the first property that we want to look at here is the product rule. So we're going to let m and m be uh, two positive real numbers, just two arbitrary positive real numbers. What we want to show is that when your logarithm, let's say of base a, again, keeping it arbitrary, acts on the product of m times n, that is actually equal to the log base a acting on m plus log base a acting on n. So therefore, when a logarithm acts on the product of two expressions, you can actually break those apart and just separate them by addition. To see this proof here, what we're going to do is let's let y equal uh, log base a acting on m, and let's let z equal log base a acting on n. You'll notice here that we therefore, if I express each of these in exponential form, we have a to the power of y equals m, and a to the power of z equals n. Therefore, if that's the case, the product of m times n must equal a to the y times a to the z. When you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents, and therefore we have m times n is equal a to the power of y plus z. Therefore, writing this in logarithmic form, the exponent I have to raise the base to to get m times n is equal to y plus z. But as we know here, y plus z is exactly equal to log a acting on m plus log a acting on n. And therefore, we have our proof. Let's take a look at another property involving logarithms. Okay, for our next property, we want to look at the power rule. Uh, for the power rule here, we want to let m be any positive real number, and then p be any real number at all. It can be negative as well, that's fine. And what we want to show is that when log base a acts on m to the power of p, it is actually equal to p log a of m. So what I mean by that is the exponent here of p can be dropped down, and you can just make that operation multiplication. To see this proof here, we're going to let y equal log base a acting on m. Again, go to exponential form, therefore a to the y is equal to m. Now we're going to raise each side of the equation to the power of p. Now, um, observing this equation exponential form, we go to logarithmic form. Therefore, what do I have to raise a base of a to to get m to the power of p? Well, we know that's equal to y times p. But y times p is precisely equal to p log a of m. So therefore, when log a acts on m to the power of p, you can drop down that exponent and just evaluate that at p times log a of m. And this is the power rule. Let's now take a look at the quotient rule. For the quotient rule here, again, we want um, m and n to be any positive real numbers. And we want to show that when log base a acts on the division of two expressions, you can change that to subtraction. So we can express this as log a of m minus log a of n. To see this, once again, let y equal log a of m, and let z equal log a of n. Therefore, writing these in exponential form, we get, dividing out a to the power of y and a to the power of z, we get the following. Therefore, m divided by n is equal a to the power of y minus z. Writing this in logarithmic form, we get log a acting on m over n is equal to log a of m minus log a of n. So therefore, we've also proven the quotient rule. Let's take a look at applying these rules to answering some problems. For the first example here, we want to express the following as a single logarithm. So we're going to apply all our properties here. Now notice here, first thing we want to do here is each of these values in front, the 1 half, the 7, we can bring that up to the top bring that up to the top using our power rule. We can rewrite this as, now you'll notice uh, we can go ahead and apply our quotient rule to the first two expressions here. Again, this is log a of m acting on log a of n. We can express this as, and lastly now here we can use the product rule. We have log a of, this is our m plus log a of n. Again, we know that when you add two logarithms with the same base, you can change that to multiplication and bring it together. So this becomes, and we have our expression expressed as a single logarithm. Let's try another. For the next question here, same idea. We have log base a acting on b over the root of x plus log base a acting on the root of b x. Putting this together, we get 
And you'll notice here the uh, square root uh, cancels off on the top and bottom, and we're just left with b to the power of 3 halves. Uh, you can, if you want, drop the 3 halves to the bottom. In terms of the question asking us to express this as a single logarithm, we have done so. Let's take a look at another example. So for these examples here, what we're given is I have log base a of 5 is equal to y, and log base a acted on 2 uh, is equal to x. What you want to do here is take your logarithm, in this case log base a acting on 4, and you want to rewrite it, uh, sort of express it in terms of log base a of 2 or log base a of 5 or a combination of both of these. So what I'm going to do here is, first of all, we know log base a of 4, I could rewrite that as 2 squared. And you can see here that now we have the power rule in play. I can drop down the 2 and write this as log base a acting on 2. And we know that log base a acting on 2 is x, so this simplifies to become 2x. For the next one here, notice log base a acting on 10. I can rewrite that as 5 times 2. But using our product rule, we know we can break apart this and change that to addition. And now we know that log base a acting on 5 is y, and log base a acting on 2 is x. So the answer to this one becomes y plus x. Again here, this is a direct application of the quotient rule. This becomes log base a acting on 2 minus log base a acting on 5. And we know that log base a acting on 2 is x, and the other is y. So this becomes x minus y. And lastly here, uh, we could rewrite this again using the quotient rule. This would be log base a acting on 1 minus log base a acting on 5. You'll notice that log base a acting on 1 must be 0. And log base a, we can rewrite this down here. Now log base a acting on 5 is y, so this answer becomes negative y. So again, uh, given these two variables, we can now express our answers here in terms of x's and y's. Same with this one here, so um, I'm going to go ahead and try to use my power rule um, by rewriting this as a cubed to the power of a half, and then this becomes log base a acting on a to the three halves. You notice again, I can use my power rule, I can drop down the three halves and write this as log base a acting on a, and we know that log base a acting on a is one, so the answer to this question is three halves. For the following problem here, again, I can take log base a, I can rewrite 16 as 2 to the power of 4. We can then drop down the 4 using the power rule. This becomes 4 times log base a acting on 2. And we just were given that log base a acting on 2 is x. So this becomes 4x. Let's take a look at one last property involving logarithms. For the following property here, what they're saying is uh, for any base a and any positive real number x, it is the case that a to the power of log base a of x is x. So essentially what that means here, are just some examples you guys can see what this is saying, is if you have 2 log 2 of 5, it is equal to 5. If you have 10 log 10 of pi, it is equal to pi. To see why this is true, notice that log base a acting on x, this returns the exponent we raise a to to get x. So whatever that exponent is, it will be up here, but there that's exactly the exponent that a is raised to, to get x. So therefore, what goes in this place here is going to be the value I raise my base to to get x, the exact value. So if log base a of x is 2, that means that a squared is equal to x. If log base a of x is 10, that means that a to the power of 10 is x. So replacing this with a 2 or a 10 will then yield our answer of x. You can see this easy with some examples. Now that is going to equal 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. And you can see here what this is returning is the exponent I raise my base of 2 to to get 16. Well, that's a 4, so 2 to the power of 4 is in fact 16. All right, here we have two examples here illustrating this property. And again, you can combine these properties. Uh, we have our product rule, our power rule, our quotient rule, and now we have... Uh, this fourth property here, you can incorporate that into simplifying your logarithms. That concludes today's lesson on logarithmic properties.